The AC performance test is something you should be offering every customer this time of year. But are you comfortable with what the gauges are trying to tell you when you perform that test? Well, we'll review the test in general and we'll focus on what the test results mean in today's Mighty Minute. Performing an AC system performance test is pretty similar among the various manufacturers. The primary difference is related to the positioning of the doors. Are they left open or closed? But what I'd like to focus on today are some abnormal gauge readings and what they're trying to tell us. If the gauges read normally, but suddenly the low side gauge is fluctuating between normal and a vacuum, you may have a system with excessive moisture in it. The moisture in the system freezes in the expansion valve and that momentarily halts refrigerant flow. As soon as the ice melts, refrigerant flow turns to normal and so do your gauge readings. Now excessive moisture can find its way into the system in a couple of different ways. The first is improper service. That is, if the system is left open too long while you're making a repair or you're using a refrigerant oil that's been sitting on the shelf for too long. The other could be caused by a dryer that has just lived out its useful service life. Low pressure on both sides can indicate a low refrigerant charge. Take a look at the static pressures with the engine off. If you find that they are abnormally low, well, that's a good indication that the system charge is also low and that there's a leak in this system that you'll have to find and fix before you send the car home. But low pressure readings can also indicate a problem with refrigerant flow in the circuit. For example, if there's a blockage or restriction in the condenser, you may notice in conjunction with the low pressure readings, a high pressure line that is cold to the touch instead of hot or warm may even be frosting over while the system is operating. Higher than normal system pressures can also be caused by refrigerant overcharge or lack of airflow across the condenser. Make sure that the condenser fins are clean and that the fans are working as they should. Then you can evacuate, vacuum, and recharge the system with the correct amount of refrigerant. Mistakes made during the service and repair process to the air conditioning system can cause a number of problems all by themselves. A very common mistake is failure to perform a vacuum purge prior to reassembly and recharge. This allows whatever air entered the system when you open it up to remain there. If air is in the system, the gauges will read higher than normal on both sides, and the normally cold low side line may be warm, even hot, to the touch. The presence of air can also be detected by using a refrigerant identifier prior to service. Now spotting a failed compressor used to be easy. If the pressures weren't changing, the compressor wasn't working. But that's not so true anymore with so many manufacturers using variable displacement compressors that are electronically controlled. Now it's key to follow the manufacturer's specific testing protocols before you pull the trigger on a new compressor. 